This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 823. Dieting, Finding What Works, part two, by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your narrator of blogs covering health and fitness. I read to you from some of the most popular blogs out there, with permission from the authors, of course. Now, today's post is a continuation from yesterday. So if you're new here, definitely check out yesterday's episode first. That's episode 822. Oh, and speaking of diet and fitness, if you're looking for accountability with any of those things, a Facebook group can help with that. And we have one for the podcast where you're welcome to post and meet like-minded people. You can find that at oldpodcast.com slash Facebook, or just search for Optimal Living Daily Podcasts on Facebook and request access to join. Now today, particularly in the United States, this is a dark day in our nation's history. It's September 11th, and I'm recording this on a Wednesday, and so usually I give some inspiration on every Wednesday to help us get through the week, and I think it's even more important given today's date. Now, I happen to be watching a documentary on Abraham Lincoln. Yes, nerd alert, I get it, I am a huge nerd, and I heard this quote that I thought was just perfect, especially for what we've been talking about this past week. We've been talking about changing your habits, especially when it comes to diet and how you really don't need to be hard on yourself. And Abraham Lincoln had some insights into that as well. Quote, always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any one thing. End quote. So let's keep that in mind as we hear part two of Matt McLeod's post and continue optimizing your life. Dieting, Finding What Works, Part 2, by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. Second, let's think about what works almost exactly the same for most people, human physiology. I completely understand there are individual complexities to each person's physiology, but the main general principles will likely apply to each of you listening to this. With that being said, Let's reverse engineer here on what is most important for improving our body composition. What do you need in order to lose body fat? Well, a calorie deficit, meaning your energy expenditure is greater than the amount of calories consumed. What do you need in order to gain muscle? A calorie surplus, meaning your energy expenditure is less than the calories you consume. Once you figure out your calorie needs based off whether you want to lose body fat or gain muscle, we can review some rough guidelines on finding your macronutrient targets. One, the general range for protein needs is 0.7 to 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So let's say we have a 180 pound male. 180 pound male means 126 grams to 234 grams of daily protein. If you're in a calorie deficit, leaner or of older age, aim for the higher end. Two, the general range for fat needs are 0.25 to 0.6 grams of fat per pound of body weight, or about 15 to 30% of total calories. If we take the same 180 pound male as our example, that would mean this person would need to consume anywhere from 45 to 108 grams of fat each day. If you're less active or older or have a higher body fat percentage, aim for the lower end. Three, general range for carbohydrate needs. After you calculate your protein and fat needs, your calories from carbohydrates will make up the rest. Use 0.5 grams per pound of body fat as a minimum, but the more active you are, the more carbohydrates you should consume. Four, fiber. You should also have a daily fiber goal included in your nutrition plan. I won't get into the various benefits of fiber in this article, but I will provide a recommendation. I would recommend at least 20 grams of fiber per day for women and at least 25 grams of fiber per day for men. Another good rule of thumb is 10 grams of fiber per 1,000 calories consumed. So let's say you eat 1,500 calories per day, then you need at least 15 grams of fiber per day. As a maximum, don't go above 20% of your total carbohydrate intake. With all of these recommendations, you may be super worried about finding your exact calories and macronutrients that are best for you. This is a tedious process that requires consistently monitoring your daily eating. 
Instead of trying to find the perfect numbers, simply follow the guidelines I have provided and simply test out different ends of the ranges to see what works best for you. For example, if you usually eat more carbohydrates on a daily basis, lower your fat some to keep the daily calorie goals similar. If you like to eat more protein, edge closer to the 1.3 grams of protein per pound of body weight end of the protein range. But just make sure by doing so, you aren't sacrificing the guidelines provided for carbohydrates, fats, and fiber. There's no one right way to do it. This is where individuality comes into play. Make the diet fit for you. Third, when and how many times should you eat per day? Hitting your macronutrients and total energy balance, think calories, for that day is the key. You should split up your meals however is most convenient and sustainable to your lifestyle, whether that's two meals a day or seven meals a day. I will suggest that there has been some evidence showing that three to six meals containing at least 20 to 30 grams of protein for each meal, especially before and after training, may produce better results than the other ranges. This is likely better because this seems to maximize muscle protein synthesis in the body throughout the day. This will help aid in anabolic processes and minimize muscle protein breakdown. Conclusion. Taking control of your nutrition is a process. After hearing all of this information, you may be feeling slightly overwhelmed and confused by some of the concepts I mentioned. This is okay. When you first learned long division or first drove a car, you probably thought the exact same thing. But with time and consistency, you figured it out. Listen and possibly re-listen to all of the guidelines I provided and just take it one step at a time. Your nutrition is an important part of your life and it is vital to learn how to manage your daily diet by becoming aware of how the food you eat impacts your mood, energy, body fat, strength, and so much more. While we are all different when it comes to finding a nutrition plan that works for us and you may not want to eat like me or anyone else you know, there are basic principles that have been shown to lead to dieting success. You owe it to yourself and those you love to take control of your health. And I genuinely hope this article brought you one step closer to achieving that. If you have any questions at all, I'm just one message away. Best of luck. You just listened to part two of the post titled Dieting, Finding What Works by Matt McLeod of mcleodconsultingservices.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. This does feel like a lot of information, right? I mean, this post was split into two parts because it was so jam-packed with information. And if it's a lot, I agree with Matt. I totally get it. And it's totally okay too. If you feel like there's a lot going on, try not to feel too overwhelmed. Let's just break it down one piece at a time. I'm sure that while you were listening to parts one and two, something jumped out at you. Something sparked your interest where you were like, oh, I like that idea. That's the one that you probably wanna latch on and try out. But again, you've got to give it a real effort, have patience with yourself, stay consistent. Remember the quote I shared with you from Honest Abe Lincoln? Your own resolution to succeed is more important than any one thing. That's what we have to keep in mind. And like I was sharing with you yesterday, me and healthy eating didn't always go hand in hand. Yes, I'm into nutrition now, but that's not how it was for most of my life. For most of my adult life, I skip breakfast and usually lunch and just had dinner, and that dinner was usually fast food. That all sort of changed when I got diagnosed with a chronic disease at the age of 19. Even after I was diagnosed, I still didn't eat all that well. It took me some time to really grasp how important this is for my overall health and wellness. It took some baby steps at first, and then I took bigger steps, and then I stayed patient and consistent, and now I can't imagine eating like that. I don't know how I did it back then. So no, it wasn't any easier for me. And I hope that it doesn't take you or someone else getting diagnosed with a chronic disease before you think about changing or before you attempt any one of these tips that Matt shared with you. Take it from me, it's not worth waiting. Do something today for which your future self will thank you. All right, that's it from me for today. I hope you're having a great week. Thank you as always for listening and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.